Welcome to Jumpers for Goalposts, your weekly non-league show for the Midlands. We're going to start off this week with the FA Trophy. Some success and a few failures uh, in the trophy. But let's see how Alva Church got on in their game away at Belper Town. Here are the goals. <laughs> A great win there for Church, and what about that for a goal from Tom Turton? You may be seeing that later in the show. Into the Eberstig Premier, and last Saturday we saw the number nine derby between Stourbridge and Hales Owen. Here are the extended highlights.
A great win for the Yelts there in front of more than 2,000 at Amblecote. What a fantastic crowd and uh, it really does augur well for Hells Owen. There'll be more from them later in the show. Elsewhere, Rushall Olympic lost heavily at Altrincham, which saw the end of Wayne Thomas's reign as manager. It, it had been predicted by a number of people, uh, but that uh, happened on Saturday. And Chairman John Allen has taken charge yet again. I don't think John wants the job permanently, but we will see how long it lasts. And there'll be more from the Everstick Premier later in the programme. Only a few games in the Everstick South, again, because of the FA Trophy last weekend. And Corby Town have made it four wins out of four under their caretaker manager, Steve Kinneborough. I know I'll get that wrong. Steve Kinneborough. They beat Alva Church 3-1 in midweek. Disappointing result there for Church. It means they stay round about seventh in the table. Into the total motion, middle and football league now. Lots and lots of action from last weekend. Bromsgrove Sporting closed the gap on the leaders in their game. They, they played Long Eaton United at home. Here are the highlights.
Peanut Town remain in contention near the top of the Midland League Premier Division. Here are the goals from their game against Highgate United. So I'm here with manager Glenn Clarence and assistant manager Steve Hamilton and Paul Postlethwaite following the 3-2 victory over Highgate United in the Midland League Premier Division. And Glenn, it was a tight victory, but it was a victory nonetheless. What are your thoughts on the game? Yeah. Um, I think we only made it tight because we probably should have done better with their two goals, both from set pieces. Chris, but their, their goals come straight after scoring our goal so that's a frustrating point as we said after waiting for long periods to try and not concede and then get that second goal after being 1-0 up we'd wait to socks off to do that so it was a kick in the teeth to, to concede but yeah take nothing away I think I think I gave her a, a better side than they were last season as we know every every side in this league you play is a, a good side and always a threat but I were impressed with Igate and if you look at the results this season they've they only lost in the last minute from the tours to Colesville, so they know they know mugs, and yeah, it was a well fought win, and similar to last week, without the the key error at the end, we've we've defended for our lives at times, and we've been very very organised, and it's obviously pleasing to get a win. We'd prefer it to be three 0 than three two, but we've just got to find a win, Chris, and that's that's what we've done today. We've the lads have put a shift in, and they've. Again, play beyond the years, some of them. So, pleasing that we we we're organised defensively. And again, it's it's not two goals in open play; it's two goals from set pieces. Bearing in mind they're land of the giants, and we've got a couple. So, yeah, it's all about getting the win, and that's what it is. So, very good. Okay, and Hamo, um, alluding to the fact, what Glenn said, that the two uh, Highgate goals came pretty much straight after we scored, having gone 2-0 up and then 3-1 up with you know, not long left to go in the game, and, and they're a young team, Hina are a young team, um, could you have expected the, the management of the players on the pitch to have been a little bit better in terms of the decision making? Um. Possibly, but but they came from two set pieces. So you know, um, I, I don't think we were, we were um, uh, on, on both goals. You know, marking up, we'd already took another guy back um, in there, but there still seemed a couple on the on the edge at free, and they ended up in the back of the net. But they're a big side. I mean, they're number six. Uh, must have been best part of seven foot easy. Um, and they had they had two or three like that. So they're always going to be dangerous from set pieces. But yeah, you're just disappointed. But. By the same token, you have to show that resilience, you know. We've gone one nil up, they've got it back, we've gone uh, uh, two one up. Um, and so for them to come back takes a little bit of character because I say, they are predominantly a bunch of young lads. Um, and against a side like that, that if you show any weakness, you know, they'll, they'll attempt to bully you. And, you know, they were in the refs here all the way throughout the game. They were trying to run the game themselves. So... You're up against a lot more things than just kicking a football, you know, and and they've dealt with it today. I, I thought we've more than held our own, and I thought we were worthy of the win. Just a little bit disappointed with the goals that we've conceded, but yeah, we've come away with three points. That's what you set out to achieve. That's what we've done today. And Poss, um, Hamo mentioned the resilience and the character of the side. For much of the second half, we were under the cosh, and I thought we defended very well. And it just showed the, the, the resilience and the character of the side that once Highgate got that first goal back, we went straight up the other end and made it 3-1. I mean, that must have been a pleasing um, part of the game for you. I think as part of a management team, you always look how the lads react from conceding the goal. 
and to be fair to the lads for most of the part this season certainly today they've reacted exceptionally well they conceded but like you said they've gone up the other end and scored and learning lessons as we go on last week conceded 92nd 93rd minute this week stand firm which is a massive plus for the boys because they can see the progression they're making and we ask them to be men because like we keep saying and we keep banging on about a lot of these lads are 22 21 20 19s and we've asked them to be men in both ends of the box both ends of the pitch in both six yard boxes and today i think they've shown that they're capable of that so yeah really pleasing to see like you said, like you said, Poz, you know, we, we conceded in the 92nd, 93rd minute against Coleshill last week, but you wouldn't have known that from the start the players made today. I mean, they came out really strongly and we won the look within, within 10 minutes. Um, and finally, Glenn, um, on to Tuesday's cup game against Nuneaton Griff. Is this a good chance to build a good cup run this season? Hopefully, Chris. Um, it's a bit of a myth that we haven't always done well in cups because we've got to two semi-finals in the last couple of years. So um, we've had high-profile pro, high defeats in the Vars and whatever else. So yeah, a, a cup a cup run is only going to help, isn't it? It's momentum and it's good spirit. So we need to address and assess um, a few knocks from today. Um, but we're by no means going to go into Tuesday night weakening in the side and. I don't think, and this is what we said before, this is key, that we we haven't really got players too weak in the side now. We've got a together group and we've got players who can play and come and do a, uh, an equal job to someone else. So it's a bit too early to decide what side we're picking, but um, we certainly won't be going out there not being interested in this court. We want to get as far as we can. So. Okay, and we look forward to the game on Tuesday night in the Polymac League Cup. Don't give him time to get back. Shepshed Dynamo have slipped down the MFL table since losing in the FA Cup to Nant, which a game I was at. Here are the goals from their game last Saturday when they entertained Hormond at the Duffcut. <coughs> I can see it fucking up today. Oh, I can. Good. It's been coming for long, Mark. Well, I've seen about since half time. It's nothing. It's easy for all of them. You're not taking it off! Finish! 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 And there'll be more from the Total Motion Midland Football League Premier Division later in the programme. Into Division 1, Walsall Wood maintain their slight advantage at the top of the table. Here are the goals from their game at home to Pershaw Town.
Studley stay second in the table after an excellent 3-1 win at home to Ilkeston Town. And Hinckley AFC won their first game under caretaker manager Dean Thomas. Yes, Dean is back uh, a few years after managing Hinckley United. He's come back to take uh, temporary control after the departure of Carl Abbott. They won 5-0 away at Chelmsley Town. Atherston Town went one better in their game at Heath Hayes. Coverage from the one and only Mark Brooks. Noughts with this free kick. It's a decent ball in, Luke Shorthouse! Luke Shorthouse gives the Adders the lead. Super ball in for Alex Norton. And a good start. Atherston one up. Harris with the uh, throw in for the Adders. Luke Shorthouse. Oh, great turn by Luke. Oh, he's done really well. Oh, what a great save from Wiggins. Absolutely top class. Baxter. Danny Harris. Oh, it's got good B. Oh, brilliant. It's Nort. Yes! He hasn't scored in three games. They drove so bad. Well, a very mini drove for him. Great ball from Scott Goodby. 2 0 now to the Edders. Mousy with the long clearance. Luke Shorthouse. Luke does really well and clips it forward to Norton. Oh no, he's been given off. Oh, it's a super finish as well. Oh, but uh, well, Sam Thompson rightly gives offside. All on the edge to Danny Harris. It's got good B. Oh, it's a lovely ball. Oh, that's great, Mr. Sitter. I can't believe it, Baxter. Josh Willis. Oh, you cannot believe that. It's a corner to Heath Hayes. Back post. Oh, good header. Just wide. Harry Donovan. Oh, that's clipped towards Norts. Oh, yes. Norts has gambled. Oh, what a goal. It's just wide. Superb effort from Alex Norton. And here's uh, Ash Gray. Nice ball to Baxter. Oh, ref, it's a pen. Yes, it has to be. Yes, it's a clear penalty. Okay, there's a uh, Adders fan Dave there watching as Alex Norson. Can he make it 3 0 to the Adders and get 13 for the season? He does. The Adders fans celebrate. And uh, yes. Should be fairly comfortable now, 3 0. Oh, and now it's Heath Hayes. Can they pull a goal back straight away? And they do. It's a lovely finish, and I think it's Smith. I think it's Smith for uh, Heath Hayes. And it's now Heath Hayes 1, Atherston Town 3. Oh, Heath Hayes are dangerous coming forward. The Adders lose the ball again. Can they get clear? Oh, it doesn't clear it far enough and Adders are panicking. Oh, what a goal. And all of a sudden, it's game on. It is 3-2 and that is a fantastic finish. Towards Luke Shorthouse. Can Luke get there? Baxter. Oh, it's Baxter. Oh, it's still. Yes! Kyle Baxter has made it 4 2! Absolutely superb! What a magnificent finish! And the Hatters have got a two goal advantage again. Oh, I can't cope with this. It's a row. Row towards Baxter. Oh, it's Hash Gray. Mitch Thompson. Oh, he's done well. Still Mitch. Baxter, Mitch Thompson, oh what a goal, 5-2, Mitch Thompson has been out for about three or four weeks and within a minute of coming on he scored an absolute wonderful goal, oh and that does restore that three goal advantage. Josh Willis has come up, be nice to see a Josh Willis goal and it is, oh no, oh it's Harry Donovan, go on. Oh, what a good challenge. Oh, it's superb. Oh, ref, ref.
Okay, we have uh, Mitch Thompson with this corner. It's one towards the short house, but it's over him. Comes to Josh Willis. Harry Donovan. Decent. Luke Shorthouse. Oh, what a goal. Absolutely wonderful from Luke Shorthouse. He's now made it 6 2. And he had us. Oh, in heaven. What a great ball from Harry Donovan. Into Division 2 of the Midland Football League and leaders NKF Burbage were held to a 1-1 draw at Blockwich Town. Hampton took advantage by winning 1-0 against Droitwich Spahn. They are only a point behind Burbage now in the table. But the big winners on the day in Division 2 were Smithswood Furs 5-2 at home to Montpellier. Great result there. They are now up to third and they are starting to look a real threat at the top of the table. Into Division 3 of the Midland Football League. And Ink Barrow and AFC Solihull were the big winners, scoring 6 and 5 respectively. And uh, FC Stratford were at it again. Cup competition this time they played Gornal Athletic in the Birmingham Vars. Here are the goals.
Well, we're here at the cottage uh, with Dean Gill from the manager of Wensfield Football Club. It's lovely to be here. It's proper football ground. Yeah, it's um, it's a good, it's a good home for us. Um, it's our, it's our home. Um, it's, it's been upgraded over the summer. We've spent a lot of money trying to make it a little bit more better for the players and for the fans really but it's a real old-fashioned football club football ground it may be an old-fashioned football ground but I'd say it's probably not an old-fashioned football club in terms of the way you run it's all about juniors yeah. young players yeah. I mean I saw you at Molyneux at the end of last season and what a fantastic young side you've you've yeah. created here yeah you know, we well, I think we got relegated 2014-15 uh, um, it, we, we were a club struggling. Um, there's no two ways about it. Uh, for, for whatever reason, we were struggling. So we have. There was only one way for me if we were going to do the job and do it properly, um, and that was to make sure talented Wensfield players, Wensfield footballers, stayed in Wensfield, um, and we gave them an op the minimum opportunity to play semi-professional football. Really. So there's been a lot of good footballers. Um, come through Wensfield over the last 20 years but Wensfield probably not been in a position to harness them keep them um, as they should have done so our plan was to get as many talented Wensfield lads in and about us and um, see what we can do and what's the key to that though Dean what, yeah, what's the key of, of you know keeping those those youngsters here is it you know the quality of football you're playing, the, the coaching, or you know, what is this? Yeah, I mean, I think all of that. I think ultimately we work extremely hard. Um, I think there's three or four clubs who have openly said last summer we're going to try and do it how Wensfield have done it in the press, which is great, um, which is, but it's not just a case of let's throw 10 under 18s on a football pitch and it'll all work. Um, and it, it doesn't, we work extremely hard. Um, we have 15 youth teams here, of which um, myself and a few others, we, we try and work as, as closely with the youth teams as we can. I'll personally go on, on a Wednesday night, I'll go and coach the under nines. Um, the youth team, I have a massive influence in as much as how they play. They all play the same way as the first team. We have a Sunday team who run from here. So essentially we have 25 players uh, we have an under 18s team and then about eight men and the eight men supplement the, 20, the, the 15 youth team players so on a Monday night there'll be a youth team squad which I'll send I, pick the, I sort the squad out for then we have a first team again I sort the squad out for and then we've all this year we've got a Sunday team as well that run from here so there's a transition period from maybe a youngster who's who we think will have the ability to play step six, step five, but not quite ready for our first team. So he'll go and play Sundays for um, in the West Midlands Prem against players from Stourbridge, Halzow, in the, the, some good, good footballers in the West Midlands Prem. So, and again, I pick the squad for that. So ultimately, in any one working week, I'll send three squads out, but it's really only 25 players. So it's not a massive pool of uh, players for the three teams so ultimately I can we can monitor you, the youngsters uh, progression we can monitor their fitness we can monitor their advancement if we need so ultimately we work very hard at it but in your first team you've got an awful lot of youngsters yeah you know, yeah you know, very young teenagers yeah. and I don't know how many, how many had in that final at the Molyneux but it yeah, was a yeah. case of can't believe how young some of these players are but it's it's a, the old adage if, if they're good in, if yeah if they're good enough it yeah. doesn't matter how old they are. We I've got an extremely good coach uh, Lee Lee Turner who's run, who's done this with me for uh, thir this our thirteen season. We've been out in the snow and the rain for the last thirteen years. We you know it was, we've always trained when everybody else hasn't. We've we've, we've worked hard at it. Um, the lads individually are probably not the best. Well, they're definitely not. Collectively, they're a unit, and we're a we're a family. And we, you, once we we step over onto the pitch, we're very difficult to beat. You know, we've, we've got a we've won 80% of our football games 
since we started. We, we won 80% in Division 1 and we win 80% in, in the Prem this year. The lads are, the lads are winners, they're, they're good. Eventually there'll be a blip, things will happen, we expect that. Um, but they're a team, we, we, we want team players. There's no superstars, there's no, there's no, no superstars at all. It's worth mentioning that point, you, you've, you've touched on already this season, you yep. promoted eventually yeah, yeah. after all yeah, the fun yeah. and games at the end yeah. of last season. So you yep. moved from Division 1 of the West Midland League into the Premier Division. Yep. And look at the league table, you're up there yep. and you've made a, a more than satisfactory start. Yeah, we, um, we're chuffed a bit. We, we, there's no excuses, we don't have any excuses at Wentfield for anything. Um, but you know, we we lost a, a few players through one reason or another. We got a, a couple of lads out injured. We 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 lost a lad to Alva Church who's recently just signed a contract in Luke Yates that we chuffed a bit for. Um, you shouldn't have played so well at the ball, did you? I know. <laughs> if we'd have lost in the semis, I'd have polished to add him. Um, but I'd rather him be where he is than with us, and that's that's genuine. Um, we, if we if we can't develop as a club quick enough for, for the youngsters then we're happy for them to go more than happy um, so yeah it, it's um, we probably at the moment playing without 100, 120 130 goals every week from last season we scored 180 goals last year we still players missing that contributed 140 goals and we're doing okay so we're we, we're quietly chuffed oh, maybe not so quietly after yeah, this well but quietly no chuffed. but and again and I think you're, you know, with the youngsters that you've got, the sort of side that you've got, yeah. um, you play your way. There is, yeah. a, there is a Wensfield way of playing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's something that you're very proud of. What, yeah, absolutely. We, if we can't win a game, we can play the best football in. And we, that's our aim, is we, let's, let's play the best brand of football we can possibly play. And that's whether that's scalable. Nobody knows, do they? How, how far can we go? Nobody knows. And that's the good thing about us. We can improve every week. Every player we have, our oldest player, mid, mid-20s, he can improve. The lads who are 16, 17 and 18, they can improve. So every week I turn up, we can be better. There's not that many teams, I don't think, can say that. We can get better every week. And I can enjoy to watch it. I'll spend a lot of time in football like I'm sure you do and others do I don't want to stand there and watch a brand of football I don't enjoy so if I'm going to come I'm going to enjoy what I watch win, lose or draw we have to play our way I think that's the best way to, uh, to end that part of it there'll be more from Dean in the second part of the programme in the West Midland Regional League Premier Division Wolves Sporting have lost their 100% record in fact they got beaten losing 3-2 uh, at home to Tividale a great win for Tividale, who are now third and looking a threat themselves. Cradley Town, Ellesmere Rangers and Wensfield, as we're here at the Cottage, all took advantage to close the gap at the top of the table. In Division 1 of the West Midland League, Team Dudley stayed top after a 5-2 win over Telford Juniors. Worcester Raiders won the big battle between second and third. A 2-1 win at Old Wolfroonians, that closed the gap for them. And Darlington Town are still unbeaten, a 2-0 win over Old Scott. Into Division 2, Seek Hunters dropped their first points of the season, a 2-2 draw at home to FC Darleston. And Bewdley Town Reserves were the big winners, 10-2 over Warstone Wanderers. It was only a couple of weeks ago we were talking of Warstone Wanderers near the top of the table, a 10-2 win there for Bewdley Town Reserves. Into the East Midland Counties League, Teversal have opened up a three-point lead at the top of the table. They beat Barrowtown 3-1. And in the game I highlighted last week, Blaby and Whetstone Athletic were held to a 1-1 draw by Kimberley Miners' welfare. Uh, back here at the cottage. Um, that's the first, why is it called the cottage? I've never known why it's called the cottage, do you know? <laughs> I, I actually don't. It was, I, don't I know it's Amos Lane, because yeah. that's the, the road it's in, but it was, yeah, it's I, always been known as the cottage ground, yeah. hasn't it? It's a great question, and I'm really grateful that you've asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know the I answer. Have, I don't know oh, the here answer. we go. Oh. If you know the answer, <laughs> send it into us, please. <laughs> Content at, jump, at jumpers.football. We'd be glad to have the answer. We stood here in front of the Carlisle Kimi stand. Yeah. 
I've got to be honest, hats off to, to Wentzville. What a fantastic thing to do. And doesn't it just highlight the community aspect of this football club? Yeah, I think the reason, one of the major reasons, as much as Carl's a, a Wolves player and a local pl place for a local team, and there's a lot of Wolves fans within uh, Wensfield, um, there's a lot of people in, the, in our club and other clubs where life isn't always as easy as, um, as we like to think it to be or we want it to be. So I guess because we, we have a lot of youngsters in the club, I think we just want to show that as a club we have a, f a bigger... Uh, conscience than just, I guess, money really, uh, money, budget, how much, how much. I think we want to just show that, um, certainly to the youngsters more than anybody, that um, we stand for a lot more. We either stand for something or we stand for nothing really. And when you know, the the day the the stand was was opened, you know, was named. Yeah. You raised a, a fair amount of money for leukaemia research. Didn't you? Yeah, we we raised a thousand pound. Um, we're, we're, we're trying ourselves to raise money um, for the ground improvements and one thing or another, but that, that evening was probably the best, one of the best evenings of definitely of, of our football career, but probably ever really in my life because you know, everybody um, turned up and did the right thing and that's really all you can ask. So I'm very proud of what the Wentzville people did. But there is a sense of community around this place. I mean, of just course. you know, me turning up today, you, you do get a, you know, there is a sense, you know, as I look around, it is very much a heart, the, the heart of the community. Yeah. And that's what you're trying to develop, isn't Definitely. it? Particularly with the youngsters. Yep. But it is, you want it to be that community football club. Yeah, we've probably been 250, 250 children uh, through the club in, in any one working week. Um, it's a well, you know, there's a lot of people come in, it's well worked. So to keep on top of it, um, it takes a lot of money and a lot of effort and a lot of resources. Some brilliant, brilliant managers of Wentzville, brilliant people. Who, like there is throughout, there's lots of local clubs who all do the same. Um, but it, it, this, we have to look after Wentzville people. We, we're, not, we're not looking to bring players in from here, there and everywhere. We want went. We, want, we need to look after the Wentzville people. That's what we're about. And again, one of the things I, I noticed with the um, the naming of the stand and since, yeah. I mean, you, you're getting uh, tweets from your local councillors giving yeah, you a yeah. lot of support. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, that that's worth an awful lot these yeah, days. Yeah. We all hear all these tales about councils and, and individuals not supporting the football club. It does feel as though here, as though at least you've got that element to support. And again, with all your trials and tribulations in the summer about whether you would be allowed promotion or yep. not, actually having people rallying round and supporting the football club must at least give you that, that sort of you know, good feeling. And yep. also, you know, you know, yeah, we're doing something right. Yeah, I mean, we, we oh, I bet uh, for six weeks, two months ago, we were invited to the mayor's parlour. The mayor invited the, the management and we took several young players and first team players to the, the mayor was fantastic with us totally genuine completely on you know there was no there was no real cameras there it was all genuine thanked us what we, what we've done for Wensfield really in Wolverhampton the local councillors have been fantastic the, again there's a lot of bad press with politics and politicians our councillors have been fantastic when we've needed them they've been there and they've, they've actually done they haven't just said they've done so, again, I can't thank them enough. And it, and it was needed. They, they, don't get me wrong, I think they should help, they should support, but they did, and that was great. And again, I think, you, you know, particularly football at our level, you know, we, we, you know, we're both in love with football at, yep. at this level, Dean. Yep. Um, and to actually, you want to see people rallying around. This is, this is real football. It's the heart of the community, and it's a, it's a cheap... Saturday afternoon out, yep. good quality. Yep. Why shouldn't people be coming down and, and, and supporting clubs like this? Yeah, I mean, our support is getting more and more every week. Um, we now probably make a few pounds every week on the gate. And from last year, the, the club probably, it probably cost people, sponsors, £10,000 last year to keep the first team and the youth team going. Hopefully this year we might be able to wash our face. That's by people coming in wanting to come and watch. They'll come and watch good football. If it costs it costs five pound and a pound, but if they're coming to watch good football and they're local kids, probably 
they know him somewhere along the line. They're either related or they know a friend or something. So they actually can feel some sort of community spirit here. And again, with the success you had last year in, in the Hunt Cup, yep. um, you got a couple of you know, cup ties coming up. You're yep. doing well in the league. Yep. Again, I suppose that would be the target again, wouldn't it? Have another good run in one of those yep. cup competitions. Because you get you do get the glamour if you get later in the competition, particularly if you get to the final, Warsaw Senior Cups at the Beskut, yeah, yeah. Hunt Cup Finals at the Molyneux. Yep. And we all had such a great night. I mean, to see so many Wenny supporters that yep. evening, was just, well, I was amazed. I was absolutely staggered how many had turned up. Yeah, last year, we had, we have a five-year plan here. Um, Everybody has a five-year yeah, plan. Yeah, we had a real we had a real one though, Gary. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, in as much as we wanted to get the league of, of Division One in two years, which we did. So we really needed last year to get out of the division, and then obviously that the plan will be to compete to get out of this league within three. So last year. The cups and I and I, I wasn't wasn't a game or anything. I really didn't care. I, I had no interest in the cups, none. Um, the fact that we won two and got to the Hunt Cup final, I really wasn't overly bothered. We needed to get out of the league. We won 17 league games from November to get till we were promoted. Unbelievable pressure on some young men because it's relative to the. It's re we might only be step six football, but. To us, it's Premier League football. It's everything to us. We, we, so the pressure on some of the young boys was immense. Now this year, it's completely roles reversed. As long as we can stay in the league and look like we're moving forward, the way we, we want to have a cheeky cup run if we can. So this year, I'm saying, come on, let's have a go in the cups. Don't worry about the league. The league. Let's see. we'll find our feet in the league over the next 12 months. Then we'll have a look next summer and try and be a little bit better. And the summer after, maybe we'll have a go at competing in the So league. I could expect to turn up with the cameras at one of the cup finals with a bit of luck. I'd love that. See see you on the touchline again I'd, with all your young lads. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. I'd, again, that'd, that'd be a great achievement this year. Just to get to a, a final, we'd, we'd take that now all day and, and have a steady position in the league. We'd take that now. Dean, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate um, yourself and everyone at Wentzville for letting us film here. Good luck for the rest of the season. And it's great to see when you're back on its feet. Yeah, and thank you for coming. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. On to this weekend. And uh, it's an FA Cup weekend. It's the fourth qualifying round. And good luck to all our teams in the FA Cup. Should be an absolute cracker at Amblecote where Stourbridge welcomed the National League leaders Macclesfield Town. Stourbridge had a good run in the Cup last season. Could they do it again? You know what? I think they could. Should be another 2,000 plus gate. Wouldn't it be great to see Stourbridge in the first round proper? Into the Everstick Premier Division. It's been, a it's been a great week for Hales Owen. I was going to say it's been a good week. No, it's not. It's been a great week for the Elts. Here are the highlights from their midweek game against Hensford Town. Good win there for Hales Owen and the Yelts travel to second place, Altrincham this week. A bigger challenge for them, but if they could make it three wins on the trot, there will be a sense of optimism around the club. And the other game to pick out in the Everstick Premier Division is Rushall Olympic under temporary charge of John Allen. They travel to Mikelova Sports, looking to pull away from the bottom of the table if they possibly can. 
In the Eva Stick South, two of our sides go head to head at Lime Meadow with Alverchurch hosting Chase Town. And again, Alverchurch wanting to bounce back from that 3 1 defeat at Corby in midweek. And leaders Cleethorpe's Town travel to Newcastle Town. Never the easiest place to go, uh, Lime Park, uh, but you would fancy Cleethorpe's to come away from that game with something. Into the total motion middle and football league Premier Division in midweek. Bromsgrove Sporting closed the gap at the top to four points. It was an, an absolute cracker. I was there when they entertained Westfields. Here are the highlights. Great win there for Bromsgrove and to be honest I don't think you'll find a game with three goals as good as we had on Tuesday evening. A crowd of 631 at the Victoria ground as well, cracking atmosphere. Bromsgrove travelled to Hena Town, big, very much the pick of the day and uh, tough place to go the town ground, they're in good form at home at Hena and Bromsgrove on a roll. One defeat in 48 league games. Not a bad record, is it? Shawbury Town had a great win last Saturday at home to Worcester City. Now this week they travelled to the Butts Park Arena to face Coventry United. Now Coventry United uh, had a League Cup tie in midweek. They travelled to Leicester Road. Here are the highlights. And Leicester Road, after soaking up a ton of Coventry United pressure in the last half an hour, very nearly took the lead which would have been a shock in this first half, I've got to say, they haven't really turned up since that opening effort from Holt. That's going to send it forward once again, Josh O'Grady. Takes it around Harrison, coming up across in. O'Grady into the box, across the face of goal, Dwyer! <laughs> Tasha Dwyer makes the immediate impact for Coventry United, back healing it past Highland. Low cross from Joshua Grady and Dwyer for all his efforts in the first half of his Coventry United career has found the goal and just before the break the Red and Greens find a deserved one goal lead. Higgins nods it on, Dwyer tries to get onto it, an overhead kick. By the full back, but he will fall to Lewis Rankin. Looks to make an immediate impact, and it's into the gloves of the goalkeeper. He drops it for a brief moment. But Will Highland able to make the save, and Lewis Rankin, just a minute after coming on with his first effort on goal, he may well be a handful for Leicester Road. Lynn's cross, Langham in the penalty area. Fire towards goal by Holt! Oh, just over the crossbar! Well, if anyone got in the way of that shot, I think they'll be heading to A&E by now. Pa 
Hal will have it from Holt. Roger makes the challenge, O'Grady takes it away, but it's won back by Acton. Kennedy sends Acton through on goal on the right hand side, chips towards the far post where Langham is waiting, Langham heads it towards goal and cleared just before he can cross the line by Jeff Woodward. O'Neill coming out for it, didn't claim it. Prinzel sidesteps the striker. Lovely ball by Prinzel. McGranje caught, he makes his way into the area, squares it for Mitch Piggan, takes a pass to the defender. Mitch yeah. Piggan! Returns with a goal. Well, in that sort of situation, there's one man that you want on the ball. That one man has done exactly what he does. He scores goals for Coventry United. And after nearly two months on the injury list, he is certainly back amongst the goals. Jones looking to get the cross from the left hand side. Akwanji, a little bit of skill to take it around the full back. Squares it. Lewis Rankin, beautiful save by the goalkeeper, and a poker couldn't get to the rebound. We're still not over as O'Grady sends it out wide for Rankin again. He turns for Vyra this time. Just misses the header as Dwyer. Can't make contact with it. A sort of clean contact by Tash and Dwyer would have surely ended up in another goal. Simple kick about the Coventry United as the game ends. The referee brings an end to proceedings here at the Green King Stadium. The same scenario as the first round a goal before half time, a goal after half time. A simple victory for the Red and Greens as they progress to the next round in the Polymac Packaging League Cup. Into Division One of the Midland Football League. And if it's goals you're after, well, there's only one place to go go to St John's Park where Hinkley entertain Heath Hayes. In midweek, Hinkley played host to Heather St John's. Can they say they played host? Well, they played host to their landlords, Heather St John's at St John's Park. Here are the goals, courtesy of Mark Brooks. Oh, good feet by Thomas Wheel. Captain Wheelie. Oh, it's a good ball, Sim. Oh, can you finish? Yes, it's in. And it's 1 0 to uh, Heavis and John. Simeon Colborne, super feat by uh, Wheelie. And uh, Heaver take an early lead. Oh, here's a bench. Oh, it's Simeon Colborne, he's onside. Can he ball? It's just hit it over. He's Simeon Colborne. Sim, oh, and it's 2 0. Simeon Colborne again. It was a good ball from Cook. And uh, Colborne with a lovely finish. 2 0. We're gone. Here's a heart for Hinkley. Can he put a goal back? Yeah. Oh, it's a great goal. It's an absolutely superb finish. And it's game on. It's now Hinkley 1, Heavis and Johns 2. A corner which wheelie you take. It's a wheelie deep one. And uh, easily cleared. And as far as Simeon on that trick. It's a great effort. Oh, he's hit the bar. He's unlucky. From Hinkley. Looking for this equaliser. Oh, it's a good effort. And uh, Ben Allsop as well. It's going to be wheelie with this free kick into Benji's feet. Oh, good turn by Benj. And he, oh, he just drags the shot wide. Ben's wins the header. He's Simeon Colborne now. Oh, it's not a good clearance. It's only as far as Dave Yonwin. Yonwin! Oh, it's a good effort. It's a good save from Aidan Wickham. And it should be a throw to uh, Heaver. Well, the legend Dave Yonwin. And uh, who says uh, a diet of burgers at half time don't work. Oh, it's the great Dave Yonwin. He gives it to Simeon Colborne. He's onside. It's Wheelie. Can Wheelie finish? Oh, it's quality. Wheelie! There he is, it's 3-1. And that could have killed the game off. It was super play from uh, the great man Davey on win look and uh, and his uh, burger diet. He's done well there. Penge. Oh, Wheelie. Wheelie, that's a good ball. It's Simeon Colborne on a hat trick. Oh, he's done really well. Can he finish? Oh, it's a great save from Hayden Wickham. It's superb. It's a corner. 
It's a nice little ball. It's hard. Good save from Ben Olsop. Quality. Two great strikers, Benji. And Jan win. Oh, it's Benji just over. Atherston Town are another side that score goals for fun. Hmm, didn't happen in midweek though. They entertained Lloyd Town in the Polymac Packaging League Cup. Here are the highlights. Again, Mark Brooks. It's by Baxter. It's a decent ball in. Oh yes. Alex Norton. Oh, it's just over. Oh, it's unlucky. Okay, it's a corner to the Adders. We've got Alex Norton with it. It's a deep one. Oh, yes. It's in. Absolutely. Oh, no. It's a free kick. And, uh, well. Okay, it's uh, light hand now attacking. Back heel. Cross comes in. Oh, good header. And it's a goal, but it's uh, but it's offside. Well, each team have had a goal disallowed. Got pressure from the others is uh, Quinn. Oh, he's done him. Oh, what a ball, Luke Shorthouse. Oh, brilliant by Quinn. Well, if the others fancy got that to look forward to, then what a signing. Can Lai take advantage from this corner? Good ball in. Oh, he's headed it over. It was a great chance. Oh, what a chance that was. Tim Willow. Can he get a cross in? Still well. Oh, right. It's a pen. Oh, my God. It's a stonewaller. Oh, dear. Okay, the penalty shootout starts. Light hand to take the very first one. Mouse in goal. Come on, Mouse. Here we go. Oh, it's a good penalty. It's 1 0. Okay, it's going to be Ash Gray with the Addis first penalty. Can he equalise? Yes, it's 1 1. Good penalty from Ash Gray. Okay, it's Galactico legend, the mouse. Can he save this one? Oh, he does! Our oh, mouse saves it with his hands and feet. Our oh, mouse. Saves it with his hands and feet. Okay, it's 1 1. Can Luke Shortos give Adders the lead? Yes, it's a magnificent penalty from Luke Shortos. 2 1 to the Adders. Make yourself big, Mouse. Okay, here we go. It's Light Town. Looking for the equaliser. Yes, and it's now 2 2. Okay, it's new signing, Jack Quinn. Can he give Adders the lead again? Oh, it's a superb penalty. Jack Quinn. Um, Ryan Quinn. <laughs> Jack Quinn. Oh, dear. Okay, it's 3-2 uh, to the Adders. Can Mousy save this one? Oh, he's unlucky. Oh, he's so unlucky. It's now 3-3. Three, three. Okay, it's young Harry Donovan. Can they make it 4 3? Yeah. Yes, it's a super penalty from young Gary Donovan. 4 3 to the others. Okay, it's uh, lies number six. Looking for this equaliser. Yes, it's a good penalty. It's now 4 4. Okay, it's Josh Willis, young Josh Willis. Make yourself a hero, son. Go on. Make yourself a hero. Oh yes, he's in! And the other one, it just sneaked under the keeper. And if I didn't a delighted look. Yes, there's Barry uh, and Lynn. And uh, absolutely superb. Well done, Mouse. Into Division 2 of the Midland Football League. And I'm only going to mention one game, and it's at the Glades. Third place Smithswood Furs at home to second place Hampton. Smithswood have won the last four. Hampton have won the last five. Something has to give. All being well, that's the game I'm going to be at this week. Smithswood Furs against Hampton, Division 2 of the Midland Football League. In Division 3 of the Midland Football League, Barter Street can go top. 
if they can pick up all three points at, AF, uh, at home to AFC Solihull, GMP Sports are in cup action again this week. And the goal machine is otherwise known as FC Stratford, travel to Castlevale Town. A plus 31 goal difference for FC Stratford, a minus 26 goal difference for Castle Vale, who are bottom. Can they cause an enormous upset? Be one well worth watching at the Vale Stadium. As usual, we have a full programme of reserves and under 21 games in the Midland Football League. Let's see the goals from Rush All Olympic under 21 against Brockton under 21s. <laughs> So that's under 21 football and let's see some highlights from uh, the reserve division of the Midland Football League when Bromsgrove Sporting entertained Alverchurch. Here are the goals. into the West Midland Regional League now. And game of the day here is here at the cottage. It's, we, we do pick these. There, there is some plan that goes into this. Fifth place, Wensfield at home to sixth place, Butley Town. I would expect goals. Should be a decent crowd as well. So if you're looking for a game to go to, go to Saturday, why not come here? Amos Lane in Wensfield and see Wensfield entertain Butley Town. And there's a repeat of a midweek cup match at Queen Street where Bilston Town Community take on Wolves Sporting Community. Wolves Sporting winning that one 4-1. But it's a league game 
and anything can happen. Into the Division 1 of the West Midland League and the leaders team Dudley travel to Wemtown, which was the home of Shawbury United last season. They would be expected to win that one. And there's a local derby in Shropshire between Al Scott and Newport Town. Both towards the top and the middle of the table. Again, should be an attractive fixture. Into Division 2, the league leaders Sieg Hunters are on cup duty and Wolverhampton United have the chance to close the gap when they entertain Market Drayton reserves. Into the East Midland Counties League now, the leaders Tevisel are at home to Arnold Town, but the game I've chosen is the game of the week in the East Midland Counties League. Is Dunkirk against Gedling Miners Welfare. They both seem to score a lot of goals. Dunkirk bouncing back from their time in the MFL a couple of years ago should be another good one. We're at the end of another programme. Yes, I know they're long, but you keep sending in clips. So we, you know, we want to show them as much as we can. Please, if you have any contact, content for us, get things into us. We'd like goals. If we can have highlights, let's have highlights. But five minutes is great. 13 minutes is a bit of a challenge for us. Uh, but please feel free, content at jumpers.football. As usual, I'm going to leave you with not one goal, but three this week because I can't choose between them, to be honest. And just to let you know, as of this month, we will be having a Jumpers for Goalpost Goal of the Month competition and a Jumpers for Goalpost Save of the Month competition. I'll give you more details next week. But let's see those three cracking goals. We've got Luke Shorthouse for Atherston Town. Jason Cowley, yes, him again, for Bromsgrove Sporting, and Tom Turton for Alva Church. Until next week, ta -ra. It's over him, comes to Josh Willis, Harry Donovan, decent, Luke Shorthouse, oh, what a goal! Absolutely wonderful from Luke Shorthouse, he's now made it 6-2. Oh, my God.